This introduction exercise 14D on the proof for the expectation and variance. Uh, the whole idea of this is that, again, as I mentioned, <clears throat> we're looking at where these formulas come from, right? So are they based off of the formulas? In which case, the situation is yes. And once we know that, can we identify uh, what that approach was and then how we derived or yeah, derived that in order to get to uh, said formula? The first bit of information is that the probabilities of a binomial distribution sum to 1. So we send out all the values of the probabilities end up equal to 1. Now, we haven't talked about this explicitly, <clears throat> but a formula that's been described is that the a plus b to the power of n, that's a binomial theorem, states that we have the sum of these values where we have the combination n, k, where a to the power of n minus k times b to the power of k. And you see it's very similar to our equation. In this situation, of course, we're not using the binomial theorem in terms of a plus b to the power of n, but we're saying the probability of something, so x equaling to something that we want, so the parameters that we've defined, where n, of course, is the number of trials, and p refers to the probability. And of course, in this situation, x is whatever we want, so whatever scenario we want. And you can see that once we substitute those values in, well, first off, that looks very familiar. And second off, once you simplify that, you end up with 1 to the power of n, which ultimately gives us an answer of 1. So the idea that the probabilities of a binomial distribution equal to 1 is just coming from the binomial theorem, which again, you don't have to memorize. <clears throat> we talked about how the expected value, or e of x, uh, equals to n times p. And again, this comes from the binomial theorem. And you can see that once we substitute these values in, we can see that we have, similar to above, using the binomial theorem, the expected value equaling to the sum of x times and then the combination, etc. Once you've done all these applications, etc., etc., you end up with this formula here. And again, I'm not asking you to memorize how to, you know, for example, cancel out this or solve this, whatever it is. But essentially, we can derive this, well, not literally derive in terms of calculus, but derive as in find, uh, and substitute a value, and we end up with this here. And note that the sum corresponds to the sum of all the values of the probability function for a binomial random variable z, which we've defined, which is the number of successes in n minus 1 trials with a probability of success p. And we mentioned earlier that because the sum, which is this component here, this sum equals to 1, once you remove that, we end up with e to the power, of, uh, not e to the power, sorry, e of x equals to np. So essentially all these theorems where we have, for example, the binomial distribution, the sum equaling to 1, and that e of x equals to np, they come from the idea of the binomial theorem. We can substitute values, etc. Finally, we have variance. If x is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p, then the variance of x equals to n times p times 1 minus p. We've already used that form before as well. So an, a way that we can calculate variance is, as you guys are aware, the expected value of x squared minus our value, so our mean or our mu, uh, squared as well, where mu, as we mentioned earlier, is n times p as our expected value. Substituting those in, doing the same things in, into the binomial theorem as you mentioned earlier, ends up simplifying to, here we go, simplifying to something that we get for this one here, which again we can simplify to end up with the np1 minus p. So the moral story is all this information, all these formulas that we get for the expected value, the variance, and the idea that all the probabilities add up to the, uh, 1 in a probability distribution come from the binomial theorem itself. Any questions? Okay.